Hello and Proclamation, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to go over the Legion T5 gaming desktop again. This one here, the T5, T6 desktop are a ticking time bomb. Newer models that are upward to 1800 within six months, your computer bricks for the error code. Other people have been complaining about this as well, that this is not an isolated event. It's two years old, so I do look at you know, how long ago this was. They said it's been going on for over 15 months, but no one diagnosed the error code coming from the MOBO until one month ago. That seems a little weird. But people are ending up with their computer bricked, and that means it's dead. This one is for the 26 AMR5 Corrupt BIOS. They're having the same error again. They actually removed the BIOS chip from the motherboard, attached a programmer with it, I went and flashed it, and it's not working. I don't recommend that you do that because that requires some expertise. There are other ways to get the computer reboot, and later on I'll show you what I did because twice my computer wouldn't boot up. When this starts to happen, if it happens with you, the first thing I want you to do is take a deep breath, inhale, and slowly exhale. Stress is a killer, but for doing something irrational. There's also when the BIOS act up and your computer isn't working, you can take out the CMOS battery. You're supposed to leave it out 20 to 30 minutes. I do 30 minutes. There's also a jumper that you change for a CMOS reset, and I'll show that in a little bit of what you need to do to reset this machine. A lot of it also is people are trying to get the RAM up to 5600 it has xmp in the bios it just the bios will not let you use it now the bios is set for the ram two black slots and two grays the grays are two and four they will bring the ram up to 4400 the one and three which is the black will bring up the ram at 4000 megahertz if you fill up all four slots it's 4000 megahertz because you go at the lowest speed is how computers work so i brought this up because you're going to have to think about a backup plan. If this thing crashes, what are you going to do? Now you have warranty, the guy comes over. They might be able to fix it, might last for six more months. But having a computer that can't last long is unacceptable. My Windows 7 I got in 2010. It's 14 years. 14 years and it's still going strong. So you're going to have to have some backup plan you could replace the motherboard with a different motherboard but then you got to make sure that it'll fit in there and then you got to try to figure out how to plug everything back in onto the board so you will get several different warranty this here which is good is your basic that you get and if your computer crashes you got to send it to them i got basic level one where they'll come on site and repair at your location all this other stuff, I really don't care because I have been on a ton of Lenovo forums and they are absolutely worthless. In fact, let me show you what the service tech is going to do when you complain about your BIOS. The tech will come here for the Lenovo BIOS Simulator Center. They're saying they don't put Legion there, but then down here they go support more than 1,000 Lenovo and Think product. And you click on this link here, launch the simulator. If I go into desktop, it shows Legion desktop. Here I am here, graphic interface, basically that true and correct. Show devices, storage setup, memory advanced settings. Mine's not like that. It does show default XMP and custom profile. You can't set the frequency. So let's move on to the next section, S manager uh, performance. And I'm running at 5600 megahertz. I started out with Vengeance DDR5. 5600 at the XMP 3.0 speed would not work. And now I got Crucial Pro DDR5. 5600. Two sticks of 32. And I actually got four sticks and the other two are put away because this thing can take 128 gigabytes of RAM. And you might be wondering, why do I need so much RAM? Contact libraries, number one. I have a lot of free ones that I've collected for 10 years. And sample libraries load into RAM, and they're huge. 
Audio production does not need fast RAM. It needs a lot of RAM. Speed does matter in one area that I really need help in. And so in Reaper, you want to go into Option, Prefaces, and your request block slide. I have it 256, which I normally do have. If you record vocals or electric guitars, whatever, you'll get latency where there'd be like delay and it's annoying and it makes it really hard to do anything. But that's the only reason why you would need the higher speed. Now, am I running XMP 3.0 overclocking my RAM? I don't know. I use a BIOS unlocking tool very careful because you will destroy your computer. It will be brick and it will not boot up if you play around with settings. Be very, very careful, especially with the way that this bio is finicky. Be very, very careful. But this is where it's at. It will actually show a memory overclocking menu. I've seen a positive change with the bios because I replaced the battery that was on the board with new ones. I actually went to Walmart and bought a whole pack. And when I go into my bios, I used to be able to play with settings on it. Now, a lot of stuff is like gray out where I can't pull down the drop down menu to change anything. But I'm always booting up at 5600 megahertz now. This is my fourth time recording this video. And after several co-boots, it's staying on 5600. It wouldn't do that. When it did a shutdown and then the next day boot it up, it'd be back to 4,400. So I think the new battery is settling in. I was having trouble also with the date. Let's see where we're at here. The 9th at 1.32 a.m. Let me verify that. That is true and correct. It wouldn't keep time perfectly. It would be behind by like 10 hours. Now it's just perfect. I don't have window time set up in the services. I was doing it manually. So something has settled in and the battery is what you need to change because you don't know how long that computer's been sitting back of, of the store, whether, you, whether it's Best Buy or Office Depot, whatever. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring up the BIOS and just show you what I changed. But for be forewarned, you crash your computer. I can't help you. The guy that created that unlock, he can't help you. You crash your BIOS. So be very careful what you touch. For me, I touch very little. If I don't know what it does, I'm not going to touch it. So now for the grand tour of the BIOS. Okay, this is the main colorful screen that you come into. When you make any changes, doing F10 and Xing out doesn't seem to work. you got to come back to the screen. You come up to the top here where it says Exit, and then save it Exit. Even though it looks gray, you push on that. The computer will reboot, and it seems like it doesn't hang. Go into more setting, and this is the main thing. Now the system summary is showing that running at 5600 megahertz. You want to go to chipset, system agent SA configuration, memory configuration. It'll show you I'm at 5600 megahertz. This number here keeps changing by the BIOS. And I wanted to show the maximum memory frequency. Don't touch it. I did. I regretted it. Don't touch it. As a memory overclocking menu, see the default XMP3. Here is the one part that I deal with that I change. If it leaves the 5600 deal, I come to this down button here and you can see default SPT profile, custom profile, XMP1, XMP2, XMP user profile 4. I will bounce around between XMP1, 2, and 4. And then I will go back into Avant, Memory Setup, and then I'll play with this here and change this. And then I'll reboot. So in advance, I wanted to show before we leave the BIOS, I'm kind of inserting this in. Restore default overclocking. I had it on yes, but there was times it would go back to 4400. So I got it on no, and it's been staying on 5600. So just something to consider, but make sure that you be very careful you're overclocking. You don't want to fry your motherboard. A memory setup. There's another thing I wanted to show. Down here, you got your voltage. This BIOS 
does not like 1.25 volts. That's one of the problems that we have with vintage DDR was trying to get it to run on 1.1 volt at 5600. The Crucial Pro is set for 1.1 to run at 5600. So that's why I recommend that. Vengeance probably works better maybe on some other motherboards, but this one here, I just couldn't get it to work. And so we'll go back. If I hit exit, I'm going to discharge and change and exit. And it should normally, should normally boot. I highly recommend that you put on a password to get into Windows and a password to get into the BIOS with this BIOS unlocked. Now, you don't necessarily need this unlocking tool. It might absolutely never been needed for me. Do I think it helped? I don't know. But what did help was replacing the battery for the BIOS. Three days later, things have been running really smooth. The computer is holding on to 5600 megahertz. Now, I have an i7 in, not an i5. That will make a difference. Your CPU will determine your RAM speed. So if you got an i5 and you're not getting 5600, it might be time to boost up to i7. And Crucial Pro DDR5, if you're not getting what you're getting from Vention Pro, you can order it and pick it up at Best Buy. It took three days for them to ship it to me. And then you are going to have to do this if you want around 5600 since that is overclocking. And that is a new power supply. This is my new project. That's why I'm kind of pushing forward with this video. Because once this video is done, I will be spinning time putting in the new power supply. This is Concer. It's 850 watts. You can get away with 650, but I'm going with 850 just on the safe side. This one here, the problem is, is the cables are stiff the way that they're made. So I'm going to have a problem with cables. It's a little bit longer. So now we're going to deal with a broken system. It won't boot up. I've had several crashes with mine because me and the BIOS were butting head. I mean, this thing, this thing has its mind set up. If you're worried about a virus overtaking your BIOS, I don't know if it can do it with this one. It might be actually a good thing because this thing is stubborn. I mean, it, it's just stubborn. Two major ones playing with the unlocked BIOS, you know, they'll, it'll light up and that's it. So let's get into that for the end of it because you don't have to flash your BIOS quite yet. Save that for last. Doing the unlocking the BIOS, save that for last. But since three days after putting this batteries in, this thing is set for 5600. I'm still on a 500 watt power supply and I couldn't be happier to have the combination of a lot of RAM and the speed. First thing on getting your computer back and running, do not, under any circumstance, throw away old computer stuff, period. If you threw the old chips away, you're going to have to buy two new ones. That is a crucial key to getting this computer back up and running when it crashes. It makes a big difference and you put them in slot two and four. Now I need to switch over to Windows 7 to record so I can show you the inside of the computer because I want to show you where the battery is, where the jumper is, and you're going to have to mess with the video card. Be careful with the video card. When I first did this, I forgot to plug in the cable into the video card because I took the whole thing out so I had more room to work with. And you can fry your video card by doing that. I'm surprised I didn't fry my video card. So let me switch over to the Windows 7. Okay, you're just going to be hearing my voice because Windows 11 likes one webcam but not the other. And Windows 7 likes the webcam that Windows 11 don't like but not the other. And so running to webcams is not going to happen right now at least. Right here you can see the battery. And then right here is where the jumper is you'd be looking at it upside down but it's connected to the middle and the one on the right you want to take it and put it on the middle and the one on the left take out the battery wait 30 minutes at least 30 minutes minimum 
let's see if I can use the flashlight to point that out. No, not very well. And so you take the jumper, put it back, and then that's the time to put in a new battery. Plug it all back in and turn it on. Now, the first time I did it, I took the battery out and I changed the jumper. And then they say to power up the computer and it powers up for like 10 seconds and gives some sort of a beep, turns off, but then it turns back on. And I really don't know if that did anything. The second time, I just took the battery out, changed the jumper, and then when I went to put the, I put the jumper back and then I put in a fresh new battery and booted it up. There's something else in these new systems. It's, this isn't just BIOS only. And those of you that are knowledgeable in the new systems know what's going on more than me. Because the old system was just BIOS. This thing here, when I cleared the jumpers and, and the battery, my passwords were still in there. Because I didn't have to change any of my passwords. My settings were pretty much there. Like I said, just the time was off. But now it's like it's running smooth. The BIOS have kind of like resetted itself. I'm running 5,600 megahertz of RAM. Now, if it still is acting up, you got to put the old memory chips in. Take the two out, put the two in. And if that doesn't do it, take one of them out and just run it with one chip. But you need the original RAM. I have old power supplies for the Windows 7. So if that power supply goes out, I got replacements, like five of them. Now when you do this, you want to make sure you pull out your AC cord and hit the power button and let it drain for 20 seconds. And you want to do it each time you're going to go and make some adjustments. You do not want to wear any staticky clothing. Cotton does just fine. You make sure that you have good rubber tennis shoes on and you touch, you know, kitchen sink, your door, your refrigerator door, anything metal to make sure you have no static on you when you start this and that no one comes in to bother you. Caution is very, very, very important. And so this is the end of my video. Everyone take care and I hope to see you soon.